The next topic in electromagnetic radiation, this is lecture two on uh, electromagnetic radiation in physics, we're going to talk about the actual wave and get a little bit more of a feel of what that really is. So when uh, light or any form of electromagnetic radiation is traveling through space, um, there are two components of that. There's the, electro, the, the electric field component and the magnetic field component. And hence, we use the E and the B to represent that. E represents the electric field component and B represents the magnetic field component. And so, as the wave travels through space, the electric field component oscillates through space at the frequency of light, and so does the magnetic field component. And it turns out that the electric field component oscillations and the magnetic field component oscillations they, uh, they oscillate at right angles to one another, or they're perpendicular to one another, 90 degree angles. And so you can see as the electric field travels like this, the magnetic field travels like that, and, and I'm pretty good at this, huh? Uh, waves travel through space like that. Now to try and describe that, we have to understand a little bit about the relationships between the two. And this equation right here describes the relationship between the magnitude of the, of the magnetic field oscillations and the magnitude of the electric field oscillations. And so we have these three symbols here, epsilon sub naught, mu sub naught, and c. Now you know, already know that c is the speed of light. And epsilon sub naught and mu sub naught, they are two constants that are related to the properties of space. Space is a strange thing that allows light to travel through it, but at limited speeds, uh, even though it's quite high, speed of light is quite high. And so these constants here represent what we call the permittivity and the permeability of free space. So it has to do with the re retardation of the wave traveling through space. And Maxwell discovered that the speed of light is equal to 1 over the square root of epsilon sub naught and mu sub naught, which was quite a discovery. So mathematically, he understood how to calculate the speed of light, and that was then later on uh, proven due, uh, with some experiments. Anyway, epsilon sub naught is equal to 1 over k, and if you remember from Coulomb's law that the force between any two charged objects is equal to k times the product of the two charges divided by the distance between them squared. So this constant here that came from Coulomb's law, if we take the inverse of that, it gives us the permittivity of free space, the, the, uh, the property of space that allows electro electric field oscillations. And that mu sub naught can then be found by taking 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and the units there are Teslas, which of course the units are of magnetic fields, times meters divided by um, amps. A stands for amps, not area. Okay, so knowing all that, let's go ahead and now find the relationship between these. Now notice that epsilon sub naught and mu sub naught is equal to 1 over c squared. So if you take, if you square both sides, you get c squared is equal to 1 over epsilon sub naught times mu sub naught. And then if you take the inverse of that, 1 over c squared is equal to uh, epsilon sub naught times mu sub naught. So we can replace these two things here in that equation by 1 over c squared. So we can then re rewrite this equation as the magnetic field oscillations be in magnitude are equal to the electric field oscillations divided by C, and that's a very good way of keeping track of the relationship between those two. Now to describe the motion of a wave in space, and of course I, I allow the velocity here to be in the positive x direction, the oscillations of the electric field are in the z direction, and the oscillations of the b field are in the y direction here. Um, doesn't have to be that way, we can make the E field in this direction, the B field in that direction, uh, makes, really makes no difference uh, because light will be non-polarized, meaning that light will be uh, traveling and oscillating in any direction. It can be in any of the 360 degree uh, directions of uh, free space. And so as long as the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So the way I drew it up here, you can then say that the electric field oscillations um, as a function of position in the x direction and time is equal to, and that would be the maximum amplitude of the oscillations, that would be the maximum amplitude right here, E max. So if we go up here, here, and we call this E max, that would be the maximum amplitude of the oscillations, times, oop, I'm just a little bit too fast with my parentheses here, times the cosine or the sine, we can use either trigonometric function, they typically use a cosine, uh, kx minus omega t, and then we go ahead and multiply that times the unit vector in the z direction right here, which would be k. 
like so. And then the magnetic field oscillations, which are also a function of uh, position and time, is equal to B max times the cosine also would be kx minus omega t. And the way I drew it here is I let B be uh, oscillating in the y direction, so I call that the j direction like that. Typically, though, come to think of it, most textbooks will probably have these in the opposite directions. They probably like to have the E field in the Y direction and the B field in the Z direction. It's uh, more appropriate. So if we're going to do that, let's turn these two around and we'll have this in the J direction and this in the K direction, uh, although that's rather arbitrary. Okay, now to understand these equations a little bit more, uh, K is the wave number and so K is equal to 2 pi over lambda, lambda being the wavelength of the wave, and then omega is the angular frequency, and so that would be 2 pi times the frequency. Uh, so what we can then say that frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. And um, it turns out that the velocity of the wave can be found by using k and omega. Notice that omega is in radians per, um, per second, and k is 2 pi over lambda, so it turns out that if we write omega over k, now notice the units of omega, the units of omega are, and let me walk over here, the units of omega is in radians per second, 1 over second, and then if we divide that by k, and the units of k would be um, 2 pi over lambda, so that would be 1 over uh, lambda would be in meters, so this would be in meters per second. Right, if we uh, simplify that. And now notice that therefore omega over k is equal to the speed of light. That's another way in which you can relate the properties of the wave motion to the speed at which light travels. So here's a basic introduction to the basic properties of light, how it travels through space, how we define the traveling of space through these wave equations, which by the way are exactly the same as the wave equation of a wave on a string or anything like that. These are the maximum oscillations, these are the directions of the oscillations, and then the velocity will then be in the direction perpendicular to the oscillation. So if the electric field oscillations are like this, the magnetic field oscillations are like this, then the travel of the wave is in a direction perpendicular to both. The speed can be defined by the frequency over the wave of the wave number, as we call it, and then you have some other uh, nice relationships between the magnitude of the magnetic field oscillations and the magnitude of the electric field oscillations. And maybe one more thing, B and E here are the average value for those, so the effective value or the root mean square value of the oscillations, you can also take that equation and express it in terms of the maximum oscillation, so this would be B max is equal to E max divided by the speed of light. The relationship is still there, so in this case we're talking about the maximum amplitude of the oscillations, and here we talk about the average or effective oscillations. And there's your basic concepts of electromagnetic radiation in the electric and magnetic field oscillations within a wave.